station. This is Houston. Are you ready for the event? That's affirmative. I am ready for the event. Young Astronauts Club, this is Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Call station for a voice check. Station, this is Yak. How do you hear me? I read you loud and clear. Yoko kikoimasu. Konbanwa. Good evening. So let's say it together. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Mr. Koyama, can you make yourself introduction? Well, how do you do? I am Chuya Koyama. I'm a cartoonist. I'm author of Space Brothers. How do you do? That Space Brothers is a cartoon that I love, and I've been reading it in Houston. Thank you. Thank you. So now let's start with the communication from Sendai. Miss Sanami Suekane in Sendai, please. Yes, my name is Sanami Suekane. Now, if you break your bone in the space, will you cure faster than on Earth, or will it be the same? Or will it, be, will it take more longer time in space? Yes, that's a good question. Thank you for that. Well, we don't know the details yet, but um, when the fracture cures, you have to have the bone and you have to have uh, blood that is uh, flowing into uh, the round of that fractured bone. And on Earth, for example, if you break your bone on the leg, it is difficult for you to uh, walk, uh, it, not to walk, uh, but in Earth you don't have to walk. So in, in that respect, it might be that it might t e be easier to cure on the space, but we're on zero gravity here, and so the cells of, you, of creating the bones is something that we really have to look into and we have to study in the future. This is a micro uh, a world. So we do want to, uh, I do hope that you will uh, be the one to make a research and study on that aspect. Thank you for your good question. Okay, the next question is Ms. Momma. My name is Minami Momma. Now, when you're in space, do you catch cold and when you uh, fall ill, do you drink um, medicines or do you, uh, and also do you check your fever using thermometers? How do you cure illness in space? Thank you. Thank you for your medical question. When you catch cold, you suffer. It's painful, isn't it? Well, we have, we have brought various uh, things uh, to, um, to cure disease here in space. We have the stethoscope and thermometers as well, and we do have some uh, equipment to check your eyes as well. And usually when you're healthy, it is all right, but if you catch cold, we do have some medicines for that and also painkillers and other uh, general medicines. We do have uh, a few amount, but uh, we cannot prepare a lot of uh, medicines, and that is to a uh, task that we'll have to address going forward. But in addition to the illness, uh, for example, um, there is a time when uh, you have appendicitis, for example. So how, how to deal with that is a question because you suddenly get append appendicitis even when you're healthy. So thank you for such question. Okay, next we go to Mr. Oji. Tsukasa Oji is my name. Is the space food, does it the same than in, on Earth or is it, does it taste different? Thank you for your um, exciting question. Now, I think that it does not taste uh, different. Like, for example, I have here 
a teriyaki chicken. And if you open your bag, you can eat it as it is. And this is also a kind of pea. And、uh, what we do is to add some boiling water to make it soft. We have about 100 types of food, and I think th- the taste, it tastes、uh, the same as on Earth. Food is something that will be a material to compose your body. So we re- you please check out what you eat. And thank you for your good question. Right. So we had some questions on、um, illness and also on space. Food from Sendai. Now, Mr. Furukawa, we have questions from children in Tokyo. First of all, Mr. Arai. My name is Tomoaki Arai.、Uh, Mr. Furukawa, you are a medical surgeon. Did your vocation of being, being a medical surgeon help in becoming an astronaut? Hi. Yes. Well, as a doctor, we have, I have obtained various knowledge and, techno- and、uh, skills. For example, when I conduct、um, experiment here, for example, taking some blood from uh, uh, my colleagues and also the supersonic um, devices, um, that, is, that kind of skill is useful. And once in case、uh, my colleagues Would fall sick or sustain injury, I can cure for them, I can treat them so they feel safe. In case of a s t r o n a u t there are some common aspects that we all study beforehand, and there are aspects where we utilize each people's、uh, personalities. But for common as- area, we learn the things that are necessary for astronauts, but for others, we divide our labor. For example, those who are very good in、um, Handling machines will be the one to be in, in charge of、uh, maintenance and repair. And also,、uh, for doctors like me,、uh, we will、uh, take part in treating、uh, our colleagues in case、uh, they fall sick. And also, it is very important for children, for you, to learn how to study beforehand. Thank you for your question. Now, next, we go to Ms. Uh, Katsuta. My name is Hazuki Katsuta. Can you sleep well every day in an environment totally different from Earth? Is there anything you take care of every day to sleep well? Hi. Yes, that's a good question too. In my case, I can sleep very well. Well, originally, I can sleep anywhere very well, so I'm not taking particular care. What I think was interesting in the space is because we, we sleep in the sleeping bag, and when we go inside the sleeping bag, and when I close my eyes, we really don't know which way I am. I am looking, which, which I do not know whether I am looking down or looking up. We are not、uh, because there is no gravity. There is no bed that we are on, like in, on the Earth, and that is the interesting part. But on space, I can sleep very well. Thank you for your question. Next,、uh, Shimokawa.、Uh, my name is Hiroto Shimokawa. I'm in the fifth grade. How does air bubble perform inside the water in space? That's a good question. Well, this, for example, is a green tea. I'll let you see this. And you can see that there is a bubble inside the green tea. Now, this is a, a big, there's a big bubble and small bubble, and the bubble does not necessarily go up like in,、uh, on Earth. Like, for example, Mr. Wakata, the astronaut Wakata, and an American Don Pettit astronaut,、uh, had studied about the bubble inside water. They took a video, and、uh, so they showed it on the、um, internet. So please take a check. Now,、uh, if you can. If you cannot、uh, see it, please ask somebody in JAXA. Thank you. Thank you very much. 
Right. So there's so many things that you wonder what's happening in space. Now, next we go over to Nagoya. First of all, Ms. Mitsuda, please. My name is Ms. Chiyo Mitsuda. Well, you wrote that in space you feel full quickly eating meal. Is it easier to lose weight in space? Well, yes, it is true. I feel full quickly, um, eating meal very quickly, so it may be easier for you to go on a diet. I lost weight, too, and because of zero gravity, all my body fluid goes up, so my waist and my legs are thinner. So for women, it could be a good news. However, what is troublesome is that you have a round face now. But this swelling of the face will be will go away in just a few weeks back on Earth. So it is only temporary. Thank you for your good question. Next, we go to Mr. Kadota. My name is Takeshi Kadota. My name is Takeshi Kadota. Well, on the ground, the blood, because of the gravity, uh, many of the blood would go down to your feet. But in space, there's no, um, there's no up and down. So uh, the, uh, I think the blood will circulate regardless of your position. Does it affect your brain and health? Well, yes, uh, I don't think there is any impact. Uh, when I reached the space, there was this shift of body fluid. As I just said, the blood and the blood, blood uh, body fluid goes up into your head, and I was really able to feel that the blood has concentrated in my blood. It sort of was a little painful. But in about a week or so, that symptom had faded away, and it, we, I returned to normal. I could uh, see that the, the brain is able to identify or detect that there was such a lot of blood, and so it tried to drain that blood from uh, the brain through urine, and I was able to feel the body reaction, proper body reaction. Thank you for another medical question. Now next, Ms. Yana, Yama, Mr. Yamane. My name is Sora Yamane. Now, before you realized your dream of becoming an astronaut, you spent so many years, but even before that, in order to become a surgeon, you studied a lot to obtain your position and honor. So you resetted all that, and you aspired to become an astronaut. What was your aspiration? I am now in the second grade of uh, junior high school, and there are lots of things I would want to uh, become and I, what I would like to try in the future. What is the most important thing in order to realize your dream? Thank ah, you. Yes, thank you very much for your good question. Well, in space, I, I really did want to work in space. I had a strong aspiration for the examination to become an astronaut. So there are so many people who are trying to uh, pass that exam. I thought that it might be very difficult. But if you pass the test, your life will change. I thought if I did not challenge, I may regret it uh, in the future. So so that's why I try to do my best as much as I can, and I challenge the examination. And luckily, I passed. So uh, I think that it is very good that you have a lot of things in your mind that you want to challenge in the future. So to aspire to, and to have dreams of becoming something in the future and to exert your effort in order to realize your dream is very important. And how you could achieve your dream. I think you could. Th you should think about how you could c become a step closer to the dream. So if you maintain your dream and if you maintain, if you continue your efforts, I'm sure that you will be able to realize your dream. Thank you very much for a lot of uh, uh, questions. Um, now we'll go back to Sendai once again. Now, Ms. Shindo. My name is Ai Shindo. What is the mechanism of recycling water? Uh, 
Yes, that is a very good point that you raised. Water is recycled over and over again. It is because we have an equipment to do, device to do that, and through filter, we clean uh, the water, and we also use chemical reactions as well uh, so that we could drink the water once again. This water is in the air, and when you chill the air, the water becomes condensed, and we, so we use that water to recycle. We also use the urine as well. We can treat the urine and change it to uh, drinking water. In uh, space, water is very scarce, so that is why we recycle the water. Such technology can be used for the, at the times of disaster as well on Earth. Thank you very much for a good question. Next, we go to Tokyo, uh, Mr. Kubo. My name is Tatsuki Kubo. Mr. Furukawa, what was the hardest training for you? And when it was very hard, what were you thinking of when you were training? Yes, uh, that is a very interesting question. Well, uh, physically, what the hardest was uh, the survival training conducted in Russia in winter. The Soyuz capsule has three people on board, and in Kazakhstan uh, we'll, be, we'll be landing on Kazakhstan. And if there is a problem, we have to rush and get out uh, into the earth. We really don't know where we will land in that case. It might be on the, in the snow in the middle of the winter. So that is the assumption we had when we carried out that training. And we have this um, communication, and the, we, they would know where we'd land. But it might be that it will take some time for the rescue workers to come, so the three will have to survive. Uh, so we spent 48 hours in the outside um, in the winter, and uh, the, what the temperature was minus 20 degrees, and it was so cold, and we did not have any stubs to warm ourselves. So, and we used a survival kit in the space, and what we did was to um, use axe and to cut trees, and we um, thought we um, burned that tree. But uh, this was the first time that I couldn't sleep, sleep at night because it was so cold. It was very hard, but it was a good training for me mentally. I belonged to a baseball club um, when I was small, and I remembered about my training and practice I had to undergo when I was in the baseball club. That was hard, too, at that time, but looking back, it's not, it wasn't that hard. So that is why I, I remembered about uh, my experience at the baseball club, and I thought I will be able to endure. So maybe you would be facing something difficult in the future, but please hang on. Now we go over to Nagoya, Mr. Matsushita. My name is Kazu what is the difference in developing medicines in the space and ground? That is a good question, too. Well, as in terms of potential in space, if you are to manufacture medicine, uh, there is this uh, concept of medicine, a laboratory or a plant, uh, manufacturing manu a plant uh, in the space. But actually, this was not reali realistic because uh, there is a limited uh, means of bringing those uh, manufactured products back to Earth. But what we are doing now is conducting uh, some uh, partial experiments and production because in on space we can have a better quality crystallization. Now, on Earth, uh, crystallization is not that, the, the quality is not that good, but on Earth we have uh, good equipment for analysis. So what we can do is to use the 3D uh, structure analysis on, on the Earth, 
And then uh, what we could do is to develop new medicines up in space as well. Like you might, might know, but we had um, experimented some uh, things for influenza, as medicines for influenza, and also muscle atrophy, and also some other medicines that may be used to cure uh, cancer. And that was a very good uh, question, pharmaceutical and medical question. Thank you very much. Now, uh, we'll go back to Mr. Koyama. Uh, he would like to have some words. Thank you very much. Um, I'm the cartoonist, um, Koyama. Thank you so much, Mr. Furukawa, for joining us. And everybody here was intent in listening to your, uh, your uh, answer. Can I ask a question from my, my part? Yes, please. Well, uh, after the launch and until now, what was your – do you have any experience that you were um, surprised on space? Well, uh, it wasn't really a strange experience, but um, in the Soyuz spacecraft, I had a window there, and the first time I saw Earth from that window, I saw the atmosphere layer, which was blue. At that time, Soyuz was spinning. And it's not that I was always able to see that Earth, but when I saw the atmospheric layer, I was very much touched. It was thin, but uh, that atmosphere is uh, protecting Earth, and that's what I was able to see with my own eyes. And here on in the International Space Station, I could see Earth as well and the atmospheric layer, and whenever I see it, I'm moved. Now, uh, it makes me, it reminds me that we really have to cherish our planet. Thank you so much for your question. Thank you, Mr. Furukawa. So, okay, so please uh, let us thank Mr. Furukawa by all. Thank you very much. Mr. Furukawa, thank you for joining us today. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for many interesting questions. Thank you very much. Let's all wave our hands. Thank you. Thank you very much. Please continue to foster your scientific mind of wondering about things. Thank you very much with this. We will end our communication with Mr. Furukawa. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you, Young Astronauts Club Station. We are now resuming operational communications.